For three years, I've been dealing with the diagnosis of multiple sclerosis, but I didn't just sit back and wait for this disease to get worse. I had all of my silver fillings safely removed using a special protocol developed by the International Academy of Oral Medicine and Toxicology. I learned silver fillings are 50% mercury and all of my symptoms started right after dental work. I've also undergone intravenous chelation to draw heavy metals out of my body. Three years later, I'm nearly symptom free and have had no new white lesions develop on my brain since the initial neurological attack that left me unable to walk. My neurologist at the Vanderbilt MS Center does not believe mercury from silver fillings causes MS. Instead, he believes a combination of genetics and viruses triggers the disease. The big descriptions of MS were in the mid-1800s, um, in a time where there were not a lot of industrial toxins. There were certainly no silver fillings at that point that yeah. I'm aware of. So it was so, already around before that. Oh yeah. But maybe it could so. it could be a trigger for some people. Or cofactor, you know, right? Could co maybe make some symptoms more uh, mm -hmm. active or, or more progressive. Mm -hmm. We don't think that's the case, but I respect people doing those things. Mm -hmm. And I've um, gotten chelation. Mm -hmm. I'm still doing that. And other people do the same thing. Yeah. Again, I don't think it's harmful, but I don't know if it's very helpful. Even though my neurologist does not believe the alternative therapies I've chosen are effective, I can tell you after experimenting on my own body, they have worked, and my MRIs back that up. Typically, MS patients see 5 to 10 percent more of these white dots that you're looking at appear every year on the brain. I've had no new white spots in two years. I respect my, neurolog my neurologist rather as a person and as a professional, and my husband and I feel it is responsible to continue this dual path of alternative and mainstream medicine. The beautiful thing about uh, the way my wife is handling this now is that she's, she's got uh, two separate doctors looking at this, and both of those doctors think different things about what she has, and, and that's we, we try to take the positives uh, and educate ourselves from what both of them are saying and do the best that we can do and in the end no matter what happens we will never have any regrets about the outcome of this did we do the right thing or should we have done this or should we have done that we're doing it all yes we are well now you're doing all these different things so I guess the question is since you kind of let us in your circle what happens now or what happens next well, as I showed earlier, I had an MRI this month, and I visit with my neurologist next month. He will look at it. That will be year three since the diagnosis. Looking for white spots. Looking for more white spots. Hopefully, there will be no new ones. If I can go five years with no new white lesions on my brain, I could essentially be undiagnosed, and I will certainly bring that information to you when I get it. Next week, also, I'll have a report on the initiatives nationally and internationally to ban silver amalgam fillings. There's a lot in the works and I plan to be on the forefront from this for this point forward and also in the coming weeks you'll meet another woman just like me who took this same alternative path and has been undiagnosed she's been my inspiration and I can't wait for you to meet her and what we're really talking about you're taking you know control of what's happening to you not just letting whatever happen happen absolutely and I hope that my story can help just one person and if it can help just one person then it has all been worth it thanks for letting us in on the journey well, I felt a calling to do so.